In the past few years, Subway restaurants has been fighting for their survival, fighting declining sales, and fighting public relations disasters left and right. This has resulted in the sandwich company closing thousands of stores all over the U.S. for the past few years and paying out millions related to its fake tuna scandal. But it hasn't always been like this. In the 80s, 90s, and early 2000s, Subway was expanding rapidly, becoming the world's largest fast food chain in terms of locations. With such success, why has the chain not thrived like its peer, McDonald's? What went wrong at Subway? Well, let's take it from the top. Before we start the video, please support the channel by hitting the subscribe and like button. Thanks for watching. So in 1965, Fred DeLuca borrowed $1,000 from friend Peter Buck to start Pete's Drive-In, Super Submarines, at 3851 Main Street in Bridgeport, Connecticut. And in the following year, they formed Doctors Associates, Inc. to oversee operations of the restaurants as the franchise expanded. In 1968, the sandwich shop was renamed Subway. In 1974, a franchise operation began with a restaurant in Wallingford, Connecticut. The shift towards franchising marked a turning point, allowing entrepreneurs to invest in and operate their own Subway restaurants while leveraging the established brand name and successful business model. This strategy led to a rapid proliferation of Subway locations across the United States and later expanded globally, laying the groundwork for the brand's international presence. By the 1980s, Subway rebranded itself as a healthier alternative in the fast food landscape, emphasizing its fresh ingredients and promoting a healthier eating ethos. This approach aligned with the rising trend of health consciousness among consumers and set Subway apart from its competitors. By 1982, Subway had grown to 200 locations and set a goal of 5,000 locations by 1994. Spurring that growth was Subway's relatively low franchise fee of $5,000 and minimal construction costs. They also initiated a program that offered cash incentives to franchisees that opened new stores and helped support their fellow franchisees. They surpassed their goal ahead of schedule, with 5,144 locations opened by 1990. The early 2000s brought about a watershed moment for Subway with the introduction of the iconic $5 footlong promotion. This marketing strategy not only captured consumers' attention, but also became synonymous with Subway's affordability and value, further bolstering its popularity. In 2004, Subway began opening stores in Walmart supercenters and surpassed the number of McDonald's locations inside U.S. Walmart stores in 2007. In January 2015, Suzanne Greco became president and CEO. Her brother, Fred DeLuca, the company's first CEO, had been ill for two years and died of leukemia in September 2015. Subway reached a peak of 27,129 U.S. locations on January 1, 2016, but has since shrunk year after year, declining 22% by the end of 2021. So what caused all the shrinkage? One, the first issue that initiated the decline of Subway was their aggressive push for expansion. Subway's aggressive expansion often forced franchisees to build stores near existing locations. The sheer number of restaurants meant that each individual store generated less revenue per unit. It's obvious now that the company should have focused more on unit volumes than on store growth. The company's lack of foresight continues to cost them to this day. Many of Subway's franchisees are smaller operators who only run a few stores at a time. This put the company on a weak foundation, and when sales began to weaken in 2013 and worsened in 2015, operators began closing units. They've closed 5,000 since 2015, and thousands more are believed ready to walk away. Two. Secondly, another major blow to Subway sales was the ending of the $5 footlong. Subway's $5 footlong promotion became a notable marketing campaign that began in 2007. Initially, it was introduced as a limited time offer to attract customers during a period of economic downturn in the United States. The idea was to offer a 12-inch sub sandwich for a flat price of $5, aiming to draw in budget-conscious consumers. The promotion quickly gained traction and became incredibly popular. However, over time, the $5 price point faced challenges. Rising costs of ingredients, operational expenses, and franchisee concerns about profitability prompted Subway to reconsider the sustainability of the promotion. Eventually, in many locations, the $5 footlong deal was phased out or modified. 
3. Lastly, the scandal Subway's had to navigate over the past almost two decades has really affected their brand. This included, but were not limited to, the short foot long controversy, the fake chicken scandal, the fake tuna scandal, and by far the worst, the Jared Fogel scandal. The Jared Fogel scandal really impacted the company's public appeal for many people. Jared Fogel was a spokesperson for Subway who gained fame in the late 1990s after claiming he lost a significant amount of weight by eating Subway sandwiches and exercising. He appeared in numerous Subway commercials and became a well-known figure representing the brand. However, in 2015, he was arrested on charges related to child pornography and engaging in illicit sexual conduct with minors. Fogel ultimately pled guilty to these charges and was sentenced to more than 15 years in federal prison. His association with Subway ended following his arrest and guilty plea. Before the conviction of Jared, he bolstered the brand's public appeal as a health and wellness choice for many health-conscious customers. After the conviction, a lot of that faded away. There's been a documentary and numerous articles concerning Jared's troubling actions. Also, allegedly, there were claims that Subway knew about Jared and what he was doing before he got caught. Couple all that with the questionable meat scandals, this was a direct blow to Subway's quote, eat fresh campaign. It's hard to be the face of the healthy eating and living well movement when children are being harmed and allegations of questionable meat is being sold under your brand. This painted Subway is just another greedy billion dollar corporation. So what's next for the sandwich giant? The owner of Dunkin' Donuts and Jimmy John's, Roar Capital, has acquired Subway in a major deal. It's been alleged the company was sold by the founder's family for over $9 billion. The new owners have stated their plan is to turbocharge the giant sandwich chain growth globally. So do we think Subway will be around in the next 10 years? Yes is the short answer. But to be frank with you, Subway doesn't need any more restaurant growth. The company's focus should be on improving their food quality, customer loyalty, service, and most of all, sales. At this point, the world doesn't need another Subway restaurant. They've completely oversaturated the market with their locations. It's pretty obvious throwing up thousands of restaurants and hoping they become profitable has not worked for them in the past. And I'll venture to say it's not gonna work in the future. Additionally, in the past, when Subway's done this, there wasn't much competition. Now there's Jimmy John's, Firehouse Subs, Jersey Mike's, Panera, McAllister's, and many more. Subway cannot win this game by store numbers alone. They need to innovate. So now it's your turn to tell me what you think. Do you think Subway can make a comeback? What do you think Subway's next move should be? Do you even eat Subway food or do you prefer another sub restaurant? I would love to hear your thoughts on this topic. Leave your comments below. Please like, share, comment, and subscribe. Thanks for watching.